I still remember this town Though it's been years since I've been around All the stores boarded up or changed names or burnt down But I still remember this town I still remember the storms The fireplace burned just to keep our house warm How we all felt so brave when we were misinformed But I still remember the storms Well we're back out here at the kiln today and this is video number 8 in this series here that's pretty much took up my whole entire summer which is building this uh, kiln chamber here for the wood miser dry kiln. Now since our last video, which covered the doors and just doing some finishing touches on the whole kiln here, the only thing left to do was the electrical work and install the kiln unit itself. And I didn't do any video on all that because I thought it would be best just to install it and then go over all the different pieces in here and what they do because uh, Nothing real exciting on that, just wiring up the kiln and wiring up some outlets. Not a lot of uh, good footage to see, I don't think. So I'll just explain all the components here of the kiln and what they do. Now as you can see here in the middle is the actual kiln unit. It sits directly in the middle of the building, of the chamber rather, and about three foot tall. Yeah, three foot tall. The base is about three foot tall that it's sitting on. And up here you'll see a shelf on both sides of the kiln uh, this is also referred to as the horizontal baffle and uh, we'll get into that later why it's called that because we'll have to do some baffling around our load when we put our first uh, timber in here for drying. But regardless it serves a very important purpose meaning it houses some extra components on top of here that's very critical when you dry lumber with this system. Now this kiln does not come with these extra components we're going to talk about here. You've got to get those yourself, but they're pretty inexpensive and it wasn't really a big deal to obtain them. And uh, the reason I've added these on to this system was at the recommendations of other guys over on the forestry forum who've helped me out tremendously on building this chamber and they've already been through the hard parts of this process and had to troubleshoot areas and really went ahead and went through the pain and misery of figuring this system out to make it run an optimum performance. So guys like me can kind of pit their brain a little bit and avoid all those troubles and go right to the drying and really have it made in a sense. But right up here we have, and on both of these baffles, on both shelves, on both sides of the kiln is the same component. So we'll just go over one of them because they're on both sides. This is a weatherproof heat lamp and it's 500 watts. And uh, these are really inexpensive. I got these at Home Depot for $20 a piece. Low amperage, I think it takes maybe one amp to run them, not a lot of power being drawn through them. And uh, these lamps serve two functions here in this kiln. On your initial startup, when you first turn the kiln on and the lumber is inside the chamber, you want to try to get that temperature up pretty fast or fast as possible so you can turn the compressor on and start pulling out that water. Now that is if you have air dried lumber. If you have green lumber in here, it's gonna be a little bit slower and a whole different process. And we'll go over that later as we start putting different loads in here. But regardless, that's the first thing it does. If bringing air dried lumber into the kiln, you turn on these heat lamps on both sides to increase the heat faster than the kiln can get it. Therefore, the compressor kicks on faster. The kiln has to be a certain temperature 75 degrees on the wet bulb and we'll talk about the wet bulb here in a few minutes before the compressor kicks on to start pulling out the water of these boards so that's really what it does it can, instead of maybe waiting 24 hours for the kiln to heat up to get to that temperature to, for the compressor to function this could in theory take maybe 12 hours or a little bit longer or less and really a lot less electricity on heating up the kiln with the unit instead you're heating it up extra with these lights. Now once you've reached that temperature and the compressor cuts on and you're, and you're good to go and you're drying your wood you can cut these lights off. They will not stay on for the whole entire kiln cycle. And the second function of these lights is the final stage where you sterilize the wood is what I like to call it. When you're done drying your lumber and it's down to 8, 10 or whatever percent you're looking for in that lumber your last 24 hours or 48 hours, uh, I've talked to people that do it different ways. I'm going to probably try 24 hours and call it done. That's when you do your sterilization. 
So what you want to do in your last 24 hours, you, hit, you want to get that kiln temperature to at least 150 degrees. And some people do 160 degrees. I'm going to shoot for 150 and I should be good to go on that. But you cut the compressor off of the kiln because the compressor won't run past 130 degrees regardless. But your ideal uh, temperature rate for this kiln is about 125 degrees running. So you turn your compressor off, you turn on your heat strips or your heating elements inside the kiln, and you try to get your temperature up to 150 degrees, then hold it there for 24 hours. And you know, I don't, I'm not sure how long it will take me to get to 150 degrees from 130, but one thing you can do is turn these lamps back on, and that will maybe decrease the time it takes to get from 130 or 125 to 150, and therefore save an energy cost. Because once you get to 150, you run that for 24 hours to sterilize the wood, then you're pretty much done. And when I talk about sterilizing the wood, that's the final process. That's when you heat this kiln up to 150 degrees or better, and you really get that wood hot. And the main objective right there is to kill all the insects, the bug larva, anything you don't want in there later on, you want to get it out at that point, and that's going to kill it. As far as having old barn wood and stuff like that, that's really essential to really heat this kiln up to kill any bug larva or any insects that are still alive in the wood. That way later on, if you're building a table with some of this lumber, you gotta look under every few months to see if there's sawdust from bugs still eating. Okay, our second component is this fan right here. Now the kiln unit has two fans on the top of it that shoot straight out at a 45 degree angle. And I'll show that in a minute here once we're done talking about this. But this is some extra fans to increase the airflow of the kiln. So if you're dealing with wet wood, you really got to uh, watch the airflow because you don't want to dry it out too fast. More than the cycle for that species calls for. But when you're doing air dried wood, which is what I plan on doing 99% of the time because I like air drying lumber. Uh, more airflow is really essential to really uh, help out your drying times and these fans hopefully will help me achieve that. And I got them in both corners of the top of the baffle here on both sides here. Now these are the same kind of fans that come in the kiln and uh, you can get them from the website that uh, the manufacturer that sells them. I think Megatronics is the one that sells them. Well, thing you have to do is just hardwire them into a circuit and build a little frame. I just used some uh, three by three poplar I had scrap laying around to build a little frame for it. But man, they put the wind out in here. I'm telling you, the air really flows when the doors are shut. It is, it's like a hurricane in here, kinda. But these run about $80 a piece on that website and they're really essential, I think, because everybody I've talked to on these kilns, either it be a solar kiln or any kind of lumber kilns that Woodmiser has, they've all mentioned extra fans are good to have for uh, really just getting the moisture out or the water out of the wood faster and decreasing your drying time. Here's the actual kiln unit and up here on top are the same type of fans we, well, I just showed you up there on the baffle. Of course they're sitting at a 45, I think it's about a 45 degree angle shooting straight up and they're putting off as much airflow as those other two fans are. So so we're going to have four fans up here on this horizontal baffle pushing a lot of air out through the lumber at one time which should make for a whole lot of airflow and a very good uh, process here for drying our wood. Now down here on the side of the kiln we have uh, one thing going on we have our output here for the water because all the water in this wood has got to go somewhere and it's going to get pulled through our compressor here inside of the kiln then it comes out in this water form and drains out the back of the building. And we got a five gallon bucket back there so we can kind of see how much progress we're having every day and see the water coming out of the wood. Over on this side of the kiln, we have our main feed coming in here. And all this was was about 14 wires that had to go to the control center out back, which we'll show that in here in just a second. And I had to wire it into the kiln into a small little instrument type panel which didn't take but about 30 minutes. It's a lot of a small tedious wiring. Well, this wet bulb here is pretty much just a small little reservoir. It's going to be kept full of water and uh, I think every few days you have to check it to make sure the water doesn't evaporate out of it. But there's a small little wick that comes out of the water. It's, uh, it's pretty much submerged inside of the tank and it comes out and goes about two inches onto this probe here. And what the wet bulb does is it pretty much just tells you the humidity for the room at any given time. And right above the wet bulb here is another instrument which is pretty similar when looking at them with the labels wasn't on there you wouldn't know which one was which pretty much but this is the dry bulb 
and it tells you the temperature inside the kiln at any given time. These two instruments are located on the right side of the kiln as you walk through the doors of it. As you come in, you got your small little vent here, which will open up if the temperature gets too warm in here. And right beside it, both of the instruments are mounted to the wall. I don't know if that's going to come through or not, but that's kind of how loud it is with all four fans going. It's really not too loud at all. With the doors shut, you can barely even hear it. I thought it might be louder than this, but uh, it turned out not being too bad. All right, now we're back here behind the kiln, and the lighting's not the best. Uh, the back of this kiln borders part of our forest here, and it's covered in trees, and it's uh, a lot of overcast today, so we'll do the best we can here to explain this. This is a small box that's mounted to the back of the kiln, which really is the control center for the kiln. All right, now this is the kiln control center right here, and this is how you control all the settings in the kiln. This is how you set the compressor, this is how you turn your heat on and set your dry bulb and your wet bulb temperatures. Now, uh, when I put my first load in tomorrow, that'll probably be a totally separate video. I'll come back here and do all my settings, and I'll tell you guys how I'm setting it for the load and kind of go over the specifics of that. Got some switches in here, and uh, they serve a very important function here. This one right here on the front operates all three of the auxiliary fans. The two fans that I showed you on top of that shelf for the horizontal baffle and the third fan on the floor, that cheap box fan, all three are cut on by this switch right here. And I could have hardwired that in directly just through the fuse panel and just flipped the breaker on, but I thought it'd be easier just to have everything in the little control center right here. And uh, just for easement of just coming here and turning off and on all the different functions and all the different tools inside of the kiln. Right behind it here, yeah, right here, toward the back, you can't really see it. The lighting's horrible back here, so it's probably going in and out. But right here in the back of the kiln, there's another light. You can see the little white switch up there in the corner, right there. Anyways, that switch is for those uh, high temperature 500 watt uh, work lights that are inside the kiln to heat it up faster. So I got a switch to operate everything inside the kiln without having to go to the fuse panel. I'll just switch it on and off. And uh, one final, uh, two more things here. The, uh, the panel, or the main kiln unit here, it runs off 110. It doesn't take very much juice at all to run this kiln. I think it pulls about 9 amps. A lot of people thought it was maybe 3 phase or 220. It's actually just 110. When I got this thing running full speed, pulling nine amps, plus all the other fans and the lights, I'm not even pulling 20 amps on this thing totally. So it's really energy efficient. I'm hoping it is anyways. And one last thing, this small light bulb up here. And uh, two purposes, so if I come out here at night time, I can turn the light on and see what I'm doing. And the main purpose is during the winter months when it's cold, you leave that light bulb on all the time because this control unit right here is uh, very prone to freeze and I'm not sure how that happens but uh, everybody told me about it and the user manual says it several times to keep a light bulb in here to keep it warm because this will freeze when it gets down to cold temperatures. When well, closing here guys I appreciate you guys watching and kind of being patient with me while I built this kiln. I kind of got away from my bread and butter which is the log and the sawmill and videos and we'll get right back to that this fall now that we finally got this project finished. But uh, the only thing I have left to do here at the kiln, which I'll do a little bit later on, probably in a week or two, I still got to put some siding around it. But that's not going to stop us from going ahead and loading it up and turning it on for the first time. So we'll come back tomorrow and do a follow-up video to this. Now that the kiln chamber is complete and put our first load in and kind of monitor that uh, via these videos on how good it comes out on the end when we dry it. And what we got going in here first is some good looking eight quarter walnut slabs. I think some of them are nine quarter. And I've had them air drying out here for over a year. So we'll get those loaded up this evening. And I'll be on the next video. We'll show how I'm going to load the kiln and my ways of baffling the stack, the settings, and also the moisture content and uh, how this Nile system is really goes above and beyond here when you dry lumber due to the fact that you can put some air dried wood in here and uh, nine days, nine to 11 days, you got a finished product coming out. So we'll go over the logistics of all that in the next video when we got that walnut coming in.
Things are going to get pretty busy on this channel here for the fall and the winter. I'm hoping to do a lot more content now that this kiln's finally done. I pretty much I used up most of the summer just getting this thing finished. So we're going to have a lot of logging and a lot of sawmill and content coming out this winter and fall. More than you're usually used to. And on top of that, I've got a few unique trees to harvest. One's actually in my front yard that we've not even uh, got to see before on this channel, and that's a buckeye tree. So we'll see you tomorrow on the next video. We start drying some of this wild out and putting this kiln to use. Everyone I've ever met has felt something I haven't yet.